Kyle, AA0Z here. Welcome to Antenna Night. I'm going to show you some of my antennas that I use for running Expedition and also working portable. So hopefully you can get something out of uh, some of the antennas that I'm going to show you. So stick around. All right, the first antenna I want to review or tell you about is my Wyndham. So I use this antenna on all of my state QSO parties. Uh, if I am operating portable and I have access to large trees that uh, are about 140 foot up, uh, apart, this is a 4 to 1 ballon. The Wyndham is 80 through 6 meters, resonant on all the contest bands. It is 136 foot across, and I string this in a horizontal configuration between two trees. So it's about 35 to 40 feet above the ground. This mini RG8UX, or I'm sorry, it is a mini, mini 8U with two PL259 connectors on the end of it is the vertical radiator that connects up to the ballon here, hangs down in a vertical configuration, and radiates some signal in a vertical pattern. And then I have this B11 ISO choke ballon that gets connected to the end of this coax and keeps the common mode current off of my coax that goes back to my rig. So I've got horizontal polarization going on, and I've got vertical polarization going on. This antenna, if I put this again at 35, 40 feet, I am working on 40 meters. I'm able to hear uh, stations that are close, but also able to get those stations that are many states away. I have worked Hawaii on 40 meters. I've worked Alaska on 40 meters uh, here in the Midwest. Uh, then I, whenever I switch to 80, obviously I'm doing almost invis, going straight up and, and straight down, and I'm, I'm catching all the counties or all those in-state uh, multipliers and also getting, uh, I live here in Missouri, so I'm getting Ohio, uh, Arkansas, Illinois, Kansas. This antenna system, whenever I get a good ground underneath me and string this thing up at about 30 to, to or four, uh, 35 to 40 feet. This antenna rocks. I love this antenna. This is, again, my go-to antenna for any contesting uh, that I do portable or expedition style. So this is the DX, I'm sorry, the, uh, the Radio Waves Wyndham. Uh, you can make this on your own. Uh, make a Wyndham, get some uh, mini 8U, at about uh, 32 feet, and get yourself or make yourself a choke ballon, and you're in business. All right, second favorite antenna, but first favorite antenna when I'm working portable is the K6 ARK NFED random wire NFED spider wire antenna. This is, I've done a review on this before, but this is my go to antenna on um, when I work portable, especially whenever I work uh, POTA or SOTA, I have used this antenna three or four times, and it is awesome. It has a BNC connector. It has a 9 to 1 um, uh, ballon here. And this is, I believe it is 31 or 33 feet of random wire. So you want this wire uh, non-resident. So it, it, uh, it, there is specific uh, links that you want to cut your wire, and I'll put a link uh, to, that, uh, to a good source on how long to cut your wire. And then the counterpoise, I believe, is 17 feet. So it rolls up into this little kite winder, and this is poly stealth, 26-gauge uh, wire, uh, copper-clad 
steel wire, and stuff is strong. Um, it holds up. It comes. Uh, I Adam put it on this kite winder, and it, it packs up very compact and is very light. Um, I will put a link up there on how you can build one of these on your own. Um, but this is a very, very cool NFED antenna. This is my go-to antenna. Does not need any coax. Connects directly into my KX3. And uh, the KX3 tuner tunes it with no problem on all bands. Uh, 40 through 6 meters. 80 is a little tough. Uh, you can tune it on 80, but uh, it's hit or miss. So 40 through 6 meters. Second favorite is if you don't want to build one, you can uh, contact the Urchi uh, Club, which is in Hawaii, and they will build you a NFED. So if you go to www.earchi.org, there are plans to build this NFED on their website. And here is the rating eight radiating element again i believe this is um i think this is like 31 or 33 feet of wire and then it uses the coax as a counterpoise so you don't want to run a lot of power through this guy or adam's k6ark antenna probably 10 to 15 watts on single sideband is is probably the the most you want to to run through all right, this one, you can run 100 watts. I'm sorry, the, the Urchi, you can run 100 watts. This uh, Adams, you don't want to run any more than 10 or 15 watts. But I think the Urchi is um, rated for 100 watts. Not really sure if I want to run 100 watts through this uh, with my coax being the counterpoise, but I believe that uh, it is rated for 100 watts. All right. I also have had some success with basically another NFED, which uses this BNC to banana connector and just connecting it uh, random wire, again, radiating element, counterpoise, and laying it along the ground, radiate, or the uh, radiating element in a tree or in a push-up pole, and just connecting this to my KX3 with uh, um, radiating, element on, radiating element on the red and the counterpoise on the black. And hitting the tune button and letting, it do, letting, it, letting the KX2 do its thing. I've had good success with, uh, with this setup also. And this is my backup antenna. If I uh, throw this into my pack and uh, it's, it's there, if I ever uh, break, the, uh, break one of these antennas... I know that uh, I can get this thing out and uh, throw it in a tree, and it'll, it'll do the job. I also have just, uh, well, I put the, the kit together a while ago. I just haven't gotten around to it. I actually ordered some PolyStealth 26 gauge, and this is a URP, guys, one-to-one -one ballon. You can see how small it is with the one-to-one -one ballon. And uh, the two ends of the dipole into a BNC connector. And I am going to um, build this as a 20, 30, and 40 meter dipole, uh, linked dipole. And I believe uh, Red Summit RF is going to be doing a video on how to possibly, or he did a video on how uh, he built his uh, linked dipole. And I think Adam has also uh, got a video out there on uh, how to make the, the ends or how to make the connector ends for the link dipole using some super glue and some uh, bullet connectors. So I'll put those links up in my video. But that is the next project here. And hopefully this will be the backup or if I can get this up in the tree and I just put a... Um, just put a... Uh, what is this thing called? A zip tie on it so I could hoist it up into a tree with uh, some rope. So 
that is on my list to do here in the uh, the next uh, week or so. So I've gotten some questions regarding how I get my expedition antennas into the trees. And the answer is a arborous big shot or a slingshot. I've got uh, the example of what I use on the screen here. And basically, uh, it is a arborous tool to launch a bag, usually about 10 or 12 ounces, with a throw line up into a tree, into the canopy, and it uh, shoots over the canopy and comes back down. And then, then you can hoist uh, an antenna line up through uh, wherever you shot. So, yes, it is $120. Uh, the big shot, if uh, there are a couple different makers, they're anywhere between uh, $100 to $130, depending on what site you go to. You can just get the slingshot and get some, uh, make a pole with uh, some military surplus poles. But uh, this fiberglass pole is, uh, it, uh, connects all into one and make sure that the the shot the big shot uh, doesn't come apart whenever you you uh, launch a uh, a throw bag, but save some save some money and just get some mason line, some yellow or red mason line, and uh, put it into a bucket, and um, as that uh, line comes out of that bucket, uh, if you um, Push the or, or let the, the the rope naturally lay in the bucket. Whenever you put the the line into the bucket, it will naturally come out of the bucket. Whenever you shoot the throw weight, and uh, hopefully it won't get tangled. The more you use the throw line, the less memory it has, and uh, it also it comes out easier. Also, a trick is you might want to spray your mason line, or your throw line with static guard. Static is something that uh, if it has, if the line has a ton of static, it will come out in one big ball. And uh, if you spray some static guard down into the line, it will come out uh, uh, smooth and won't get tangled in the tree. And getting a throw weight and your line tangled in the tree, especially at a state park or national park or wherever um, that you can put antenna or uh, ropes into trees, probably not a good idea. So this is how I get my antennas 40, 50, 60 feet up into the air if needed. Um, it is uh, a great tool. I've seen some other tools. The fishing line tool is great. Uh, I've seen some dog throw uh, shot where they, they take a 22 and uh, use that to to shoot a line into the uh, into the tree. Also, a potato gun uh, or a, a golf ball launcher will work. But I have found that this is very accurate. You can um, you can pretty much uh, put different tensions on here on how far you want to throw your your throw weight. There's also some videos on how to throw your throw weight. Uh, through your legs and up over your head and get uh, that throw weight uh, 50 and 60 feet up into the air also. I have had mixed uh, uh, experiences with that on my aim is not very good, so uh, I usually just uh, throw that thing up over my head at will. And But this is a lot more accurate on trying to get it over a certain branch. So if you're looking for a solution... This is a very good antenna launching solution to, to get your lines up over uh, different trees. So hopefully found something interesting or informative on some of the antennas that I use. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the chat. Hit that thumbs up, and uh, we'll talk to you later. 73.